five Americans is about to be living under a new world order as New York joins California and a growing list of U.S. states preparing to effectively shut down. You're free, and freedom is beautiful. It'll take time to restore chaos, order out of chaos, but we will. We're at war. In a true sense, we're at war. And we're fighting an invisible enemy. Actually, I'm a wartime president. This is a war. No question that there will be a challenge to the coming administration in the arena of infectious diseases, both chronic infectious diseases in the sense of already ongoing disease, and we have certainly a large burden of that, but also there will be a surprise outbreak. There will be a surprise outbreak. There will be a surprise outbreak. Uh, an epidemic, either naturally caused or intentionally caused, is the most likely thing to cause, say, 10 million excess deaths. You know, we always talk about the potential occurrence of a 1917-like uh, Spanish flu problem. We also face a new threat that the next epidemic uh, has a good chance of originating on a computer screen of a terrorist intent on using genetic engineering to create a synthetic version of the smallpox virus or a contagious and highly deadly strain of flu. The world today has 6.8 billion people that's headed up to about 9 billion. Now, if we do a really great job on new vaccines, health care, reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15 percent. Has anybody seen contagion? <laughs> That's the answer. Go out and use genetic engineering to create a better virus. <laughs> what could cause an excess in a single year of 10 million deaths? Now, clearly, a, a, a big war could, and a pandemic, natural or, or created by bioterror. The Communist Party, when they founded the Soviet Union, the symbol for world communism, was a sunrise over the earth with the, with the sun rays coming up behind the earth. And sun rays are called a corona. And that's why when I heard about coronavirus, I knew there's something going on here with the French Grand Orient Temple Masons and world communism. They're trying to overthrow the United States and England and the Anglo-Saxon, Anglo-American dual world Christian power. And so the French Grand Orient Temple Masons promoting the idea of communism to be the world government coming in the future. That's why when I first heard the word coronavirus, I thought to myself, there's a tip off Something's going on here politically that's very, very big. And it's the communist world movement. It's called the World Communist New World Order. The New World Order, our army comes marching in, partnering with police to help enforce the country's tough new quarantine laws. you to know what those symbols are. They're not going to make it public because it's a conspiracy. The goal of the Masons is to lead the world into the new world order. The American people, in fact, the people of the world will never be given a chance to vote on this or to decide. We are going to get the new world order without vote, without decision by us. Somebody's the president of the United States 
the authority is total. And that's the way it's got to be. This new report that's coming out that indicates about $3.7 million flowed from the National Institutes of Health here in the U.S. to the Wuhan lab in China. We also now know that NIAID, the department associated with the National Institutes of Health, of which Dr. Anthony Fauci is in control, had already been conducting experiments with the Wuhan lab in the past in regard to coronavirus. Dr. Anthony Fauci's National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, NIAID, actually funded a study on bat coronavirus, which was a project that included scientists at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. President's coronavirus response team are all pushing the Bill Gates vaccination agenda. Dr. Fauci is on the leadership council for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. In January of 2017, Anthony Fauci told a crowd at Georgetown University that there would be a surprise outbreak during the Trump presidency. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation funds the WHO, the NIH, the CDC, and the UN. It was discussed in 2015 that this should not be done. There were two main scientists that said this should not be done. The virus is not a naturally occurring phenomenon. This was orchestrated. We have the scientific evidence from 2015 showing that the research was done, the gain of function components were done by the scientists in North Carolina that then went back to Wuhan. The US government and the Chinese government paid Dr. Xi to fund research. In 2014, Dr. Xi was the recipient of a number of US government grants as well as grants from the National Basics Research Program of China, the Chinese Academy of Science, the National Natural Science Foundation of China, and from the Strategic Priority Research Program of Chinese Academy of Sciences to assist in funding research into. So they took SARS and reverse engineered the genetic coding itself. They then inserted additional proteins to enhance the efficacy of the inside the human lungs, specifically inside the, for, the, for the human aspect. Why are they making this? And why are they doing gain of function? Why is University of North Carolina involved? They were actual other scientists that opposed this information. They did not want this, these studies to be done because they were afraid of a breakout. And they published this manipulation study. After they manipulated it, they published it in this 2015 paper. And they created this hybrid, which is far more deadly and can't be vaccinated against. It is resistant to vaccination because of certain morphological changes that were created to the wild type backbone. Here it is. It's a gain of function right there, they admit it. Gain of function basically means taking something and making it more potent. And Dr. Shi learns how to perform gain of function operations within nurses and then she returns to her post in Wuhan, China. She learned this in University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. They get the cells from Fort Detrick and now she goes back to Wuhan, which is where the techniques that she learned about gain of function were then applied. Fast forward to November 2019, a breach of containment occurs at the Wuhan Institute of Virology and patient zero is detected somewhere between December 1st and December 12th. This is an enhanced version of the hybrid that they helped develop at UNC with Fort Detrick support back in 2015. Why would we take any kind of organism and make it more potent? They're doing gain of function studies. This is what created it. While I was searching for related studies online, one Chinese virologist in particular caught my attention. Her name is Shi Zheng Li. Wikipedia describes Shi Zheng Li as a, quote, Chinese virologist and researcher at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, which is part of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Further investigations show that Shi Zheng Li has been a figure of controversy since the Wuhan virus outbreak. This is due to a paper she published in 2015 discussing her own research into synthetic viruses. From 2010 onward, the focus of she and her team was redirected to identifying the capacity for coronavirus transmission across species, specifically putting the spotlight on the S protein of the coronaviruses. In other words, her team's research in the Wuhan lab has been looking into the part that can make coronaviruses transmittable to humans. 
In November 2015, she and her team at the Wuhan lab once again published a paper, this time in the British journal Nature Medicine. They discussed the creation of a synthetic virus, a self-replicating chimeric virus. This virus had the SARS virus as the framework, with the key S protein replaced. On November 14, 2018, Shi Zhengli spoke at the School of Life Sciences and Biotechnology at Shanghai Jiao Tong University. The topic was bat coronavirus and its cross-species infection. Reports of this event have since been deleted from the university website. They were doing research on a human transmittable coronavirus that was actually published in a paper. So this is research that they actually published. They were working on developing a coronavirus for the human host, which you know leads you to question, why would you be creating a coronavirus that can infect humans? February 3rd, Dr. Wu Xiaohua blew the whistle using his real name that Shi Zhengli's haphazard laboratory management may have led the Wuhan virus to leak from the lab. February 4th, chairman of Duo Yi, Shu Bo, blew the whistle using his real name that the Wuhan Institute of Virology was suspected of manufacturing and leaking the Wuhan virus. February 17th, Institute researcher Chen Chuan Jiao blew the whistle using her real name that Director General of the Institute, Wang Yanyi, was suspected of leaking the virus. Dr. Francis Boyle, a Harvard PhD famous for drafting the Biological Weapons Anti-Terrorism Act of 1989, clearly expressed, the novel coronavirus we're seeing here is an offensive biological warfare weapon. I will be your master of ceremonies for event 201. On behalf of our center and our partners, the World Economic Forum and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. A new coronavirus spread silently within herds. Gradually, farmers started getting sick. Infected people got a respiratory illness with symptoms ranging from mild flu-like signs to severe pneumonia. The sickest required intensive care. Many died. In three months, we could be approaching 10 million cases. We're at the start of what's looking like it will be a severe pandemic. And there are problems emerging that can only be solved by global business and governments working together. The UN has a worldwide footprint, universally recognized and universal membership. We're at a moment where the social media platforms have to step forward and recognize the moment to assert that they're a technology platform and not a broadcaster is, is over. Um, they in fact have to be a participant in broadcasting accurate information and partnering with the scientific and health communities to counterweight, if not flood the zone, of accurate information. One thing we haven't spoken about, and I'm wondering whether it's time to talk about this, is uh, a step up from the part of the governments on enforcement actions against fake news. A type of public-private collaboration that we have not generally had in these crises needs to be put together pretty quickly. So we will be invoking the Defense Production Act. Last week I signed an emergency declaration under the Stafford Act. To unleash the full power of the federal government in this effort today, I am officially declaring a national emergency. We're sending, uh, upon request, the two hospital ships. They're being prepared right now. They're massive ships. They're the big white ships with the Red Cross on the sides. What do you be a Knights Templar? You got to be a Mason. Again, in the Knights Templar logo, has a big crown and a cross through it. For the most part, it's, it's really a, a war footing that we need to be on. It's, it can happen quickly, a martial type plan, uh, you know, I don't mean to say that exactly, but a martial plan that can go into effect uh, can stimulate a change very quickly. 
And through FEMA, the federal government will be funding 100 percent of the cost of deploying National Guard units to carry out approved missions. never want a serious crisis to go to waste. And what I mean by that, it's an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before. All residents must remain indoors until the voluntary quarantine has been lifted. Alert phase five pandemic has not been lifted. Alert. State of emergency remains in place. Be well. Have we established the surveillance and risk assessment systems? I fully expect uh, that we will be confronted by a fast-moving, highly lethal pandemic of a respiratory pathogen. Now we need to go and look in families to find those people who may be sick and remove them and isolate them. The full lockdown of all of Italy. New Zealand has just entered an unprecedented lockdown. Boris Johnson has just ordered all of us to stay inside for at least the next three weeks. He's also given police the powers to find people who disobey these orders. A giant padlock is about to snap shut on Sydney and the rest of the state as we go into an unprecedented lockdown. Please come out of the surf now. Please come out of the ocean. The state of New York now in lockdown. The coronavirus outbreak has slammed the global airline industry. Biggest point drop in history. The Dow losing more than 2,000 points today. And a lot of investors repriced that oil shock. This is a historical day, the biggest drop we've seen since that crash in 1987. Reserve Stewart will be cutting rates by 50 basis points. Uh, the U.S. Central Bank uh, down to near zero percent. Dow and S&P futures surging today off the backs of the Fed, unleashing infinity QE. Is that tax money? that the Fed is spending? It's not tax money. We simply use the computer to mark up the uh, size of the account. And I want to congratulate the Federal Reserve. For starters, they've lowered the Fed rate. That's been lowered down to zero. Department just released new unemployment figures. So we're now talking about 22 million people just in the last four weeks filing. Roughly all the jobs that were added to the U.S. economy since the Great Recession, correct? Five weeks ago, these people were getting on with their lives. They had jobs, and in the space of four weeks, wiped out a whole decade near of job gains. Here in the United States, we are alarmed by the new calls to adopt socialism in our country. America was founded on liberty and independence, and not government coercion, domination, and control. We are born free, and we will stay free. We will be suspending all travel from Europe to the United States. Tonight, we renew our resolve that America will never be a socialist country. We have to save some of these great companies. Now, I'm going to sign this, and it's a great honor. $6.2 trillion. We anticipate the worst economic fallout since the Great Depression. Be prepared for the hard days that lie ahead. The greatest depression has begun. This is going to be an economic epidemic.
Members of the public are reminded to keep a safe distance of six feet from others. Greet each other from a distance without any physical contact. Keep a distance of at least one and a half meters from each other. What we're doing here at this department is trying to leverage the technology that's out there and make it fit into this mold that is COVID-19. Eventually, what we'll have to have is certificates of who's a recovered person, who's a vaccinated person. ID2020 is a global strategic initiative aiming to help deliver against the United Nations sustainable goal of legal identity for all. We know that this is going to happen in the last days. The Bible tells us about a mark that's going to be on people's bodies, people being forced to enter into a financial system where nobody can buy or sell without the mark of the beast. So when you told me today this mark of the beast project that Microsoft founder, billionaire Bill Gates is proposing in connection to the coronavirus outbreak, I just had to close my eyes and say, dear God, we're closer to the end than any of us realize. But the vaccine is going to carry the mark of the beast implant. And every person is going to be ordered to be vaccinated. And anybody who resists vaccination obviously will be ostracized from society, but possibly could be imprisoned for refusing refusing an order and parents uh, parents will see their children taken away from them now we need to go and look in families to find those people who may be sick and remove them and isolate them Welcome, James. It's been a long time. And finally, here we are. What took you so long? Me. It was all me, James. It's always been me, the author of all your pain.
New World Order. An international world order. Novus Order Sequorum. A new order for the centuries, for the ages, forever. And creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. I think a new world order is emerging. New World Order. Peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. <laughs> 